you don't have anything. No. I have you. Aww. <laughs> <laughs> Hello and welcome to Lord Lucan. It's time to put your feet in the stirrups as we warm our hands on another episode of Life After Lockup. We check in with the Millses and see how they're getting on with repopulating Las Vegas. It's a very scary thought. Boozy Bianca, aka Coraline, tells us how she knows all about addiction. I'm like, I don't know anything. Randy Rob spills his load on Tenny's surface. What? Hold on. <laughs> Millsy gets some distressing news after thinking he knew his ass from his elbow. There's a butt there. I don't like that. Why is there a butt? Coraline finds something disturbing on the side of her face. <laughs> and we have a hang on a second about Rob's dad, Rob. All this and more right here on the Lord Lucan channel. Any other questions? Bonjour mon ami, guten tag schweig, and aop to you. Big loves to those who have subscribed, you beautiful people, and an Ashira cat for the laps of the lords and ladies of the Lucan Manor. First today, we're off to Scottsdale to see something spindly, spiky, and generally unpleasant to the touch. That's right, it's Coraline and one and done Daniel. And this week it's all about getting a decent job. Well, that leaves old starfish knickers out of it then. And one and Dan is experiencing problems getting work. But today, this moving company, they reached out to me. Oh, that's convenient. I bet one of the producers was moving. So they thought they'd get a better deal if they get the company a bunch of national coverage. But that's just my little cynical mind. I'm sure it's totally genuine and not at all scripted. Unlike this performance of, I'm so happy sad that I could cry. They want to put me to work. Yeah. So he's got a job with a moving company. You know, like moving stuff. Not too challenging to comprehend, but because comprehension takes understanding, and understanding requires empathy, Coraline's left clueless. I'm like, I don't know anything. Okay, well, yeah, it's like a moving company. You know, you pick something up from point A, and you take it to point B. What's, uh, what's there to understand here? From what I understand, we're just going to private residences and moving people just from house to house. Why the hell are we spending so long deciphering what a moving company does? Anyway, Coraline gives the whole supportive thing a go by telling him that he's got nothing. Yeah. Cheers. You don't have anything. No. I have you. Aww. <laughs> <laughs> Man, what did she find in her face to be so horrifying? Ugh. Peeling remnants of one and Dan's productivity, perhaps? There's something about Coraline? So anyway. One and Dan is being a right pain in the ass because he needs to be taken to work to provide the money she wants him to provide. I mean, what a cheek. She's got all that, uh, I don't know, hanging around looking bitter and displeased. It's a full-time job being bitter and entitled, you know? And she doesn't know if she can fit all those taxi duties in. I don't know what my day looks like. Emptier than a brainstorming session with Joey? But all this got a bit boring. Man, I got a bit distracted. Man, do you know what happens when I get distracted? Rude. Rama Queen. I like to drink. Rude. You don't have anything. Rama Queen. Sticking it in, you know? Rude. I can have a little more time. Rama Queen. For myself. Rude. What my day looks like. Rama Queen. I'm like, I don't know anything. Rude. Problems with alcohol. Rama Queen. Queen. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's only slightly distracted, uh, but I do like doing funny car stuff. Be great. Yeah, I just want to be great. Yeah, I just want to be great. Anyway, it's one and Dan's lucky day because Coraline's taking him for a quick suck behind the strip mall. I'm doing good. I really need some girl time though. Girl time uh, in, in Warhammer shop. No offense to the grimdark fans on board today, but it's not exactly Vajarama Central, is it? But maybe girl time means being worshipped like an emperor by a horde of neckbeards. Who knows? Or more importantly, who cares? I think in some ways he might just be taking advantage of me and reaping the benefits. Benefits, uh, yeah, sure, I, I think I'll pass, actually. 
Someone else is handing out a slap in the face, and I don't think I'd prefer that. Over now to Mills in Juju. And Montana Tantrum is still reeling from last week's news. Something happened to Justine, and she automatically jumps up and says that Kylie would be the one to take custody of Belly and Santana. No, no, can you believe it? A guy that smashes up the house and storms off whenever it gets a bit stressful, not being left with children during a bereavement. <laughs> I mean, what's the world coming to? So he regales us of stories of that time he went to a P. Diddy party. But there's a butt there. I don't like that. Why is there a butt? Well, you know, he might have gone if he was remotely famous for being a rapper. Or, you know, talented. Or, you know, accessible. But she doesn't understand that if something was to happen to her, I want to be the one to step up. Yeah, here's an idea. How about you step up now, rather than waiting for something to go wrong? You know, just a suggestion. The phrase, step up, is pretty meaningless if you're stepping up, you know, probably sometime in the future, maybe. Waiting for your partner to literally pass away before you bother stepping up and leading your family. And leadership is the word, you know. Successful families are led, not managed. What's the best way to teach someone good self-management and respect? Show them decent leadership and responsibility. You know, just a suggestion. Parenting might as well be rocket science sometimes, you know? Because so few people seem to understand it. Boy, am I useless. Just sitting here like a fucking toddler. I'm, I'm, I'm here. I can do this. Yeah. I think I can handle more than anything. Ooh, I think we're gonna have a good old-fashioned handle-off. Who can handle the most? Juju, who, well, let's face it, probably has more handle than a culinar copper pot. And he's, well, I don't know, more of a bowl. Off we off now to see Kim and Joey. This week, they have an appointment for the legal team. Hey. Hey. My hey. name's Abigail. Nice hey. to meet you. I'm Kimberly. Nice, nice to meet you. Me. Yeah, no one cares who the other person is. I think she just wanted to be on the telly anyway. Doesn't really have a practical function. But don't worry. Joey is vetting his legal team. Well, he's kind of vetting her bum as she walks past and gives it a gentle nod of approval. The rest is pretty boring, really. They're sort of touting a storyline whereby Joey... You are the father ...of one of Kim's kids. Guess we'll have to call her Legs Akimbo Kim from now on. Here's some of the fun thinking faces the lawyers make. Legs is time for a commercial break, but stay tuned for much more. And don't forget you can catch me weekdays for my live news reviews and oddness. Coffee at the manor. Kindly watch as much of the adverts as you can, because it helps me in many ways. So skip the skip to support the channel and I'll see you in a mo. Time now for a cup of Tenny and Rob. And we're up to meet Rob's dad Rob in this episode. Ah, oh, lovely. A bit of family time. Maybe he'll swing for someone too. Now, I don't know much about basketball, but I think he's got all the agility of a gazelle that's been shot in the head and is limping off to die somewhere. Just, uh, you know, trying to figure the life thing out. So, Rob's dad. Probably just some run-of-the-mill teacher or something, right? <laughs> Hang on a second. Rob's dad teased us with this little nugget. We had previous murder cases and stuff like that that we had went through and we had beat all that stuff, but... And all that we and us made me dig a little deeper. And here's a little summary of what I found. Robert Rob Jones was a classmate of former Channel 8 reporter Kim Jackson and was shot in the face in 1988, hence the scars. He was a Hoover Crip from Tulsa. Now I'm sure you know all about the Hoover Crips, being as gangster as you are, but just in case your G slipped a little bit, the Hoover Crips, or the 74 Hoover Crips, or the 74 Hoover Criminal Gang, 74 HCG for short, came from the Hoover Avenue and 74th Street area of South Central Los Angeles. In the 80s, the FBI estimated that they made about a million dollars a month, which in today's money would be about three and a half million dollars. It was founded by a guy called OG Peanut, and they don't much like the fellows over at the 79 Mad Swan Bloods. Unfortunately though, one day, OG Peanut and his friend Lucky were both caught slipping in a restaurant by the rivals, the Juice Eights, and poor old Lucky had to enjoy the irony. But all this joining gans and getting thrown in jail is not his fault, you know? No, 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 it's all about a curse. It looks like it's like deeper issues, yeah. like a generational, generational curse. curse. Yeah. Okay, sure, well, a generational curse is a negative pattern inherited from ancestors who rebelled against God or who have sinned. So it's not their fault they did a bunch of criminal shit and got caught. It's all just, you know, some old guy's fault. I see, that explains everything. This is Daniel Baker. He's a movie star from the 60s and the 70s. He produced and starred in Zulu and The Italian Job with Michael Caine. 
Do you think he looks familiar? Well, he's my great granduncle and was a naughty gambler. Therefore, everything I do is not my fault. See this guy? Francois Boucher, or Butcher, as it was when it came onto England land. He was a French painter from the Rococo period. Those are the ones with all the jests, cherubs, and chickiness. He used to paint naked women that go hang out at the Palace of Versailles, which was the equivalent of the Playboy Mansion back then. So you see this guy? Doomed, I tell you. And that's where you got to start with them when they're young. <laughs> that's where Diddy went wrong. <clears throat> Big Daddy Rob is very important to Little Daddy Rob, and has rolled a few models in his time. My dad is a heavy role model for me in a lot of areas in my life. Such so as, you know, doing stupid stuff, getting caught and wasting half your life in a box. Yeah, nice one. It's a trip to Syracuse on the to-do list for a little time with Zerubble and Troy. I started smoking weed when I was about 12, sneaking around doing it. I've been smoking ever since. Probably the worst advert for cannabis ever made. The cannabis guys had a good when an ambassador such as Elon Musk rocked up with a fat one on that Joe Rogan show. Then they were all like, See? Doesn't make you stupid. This guy's really clever. Then Troy rocks up with his 3.5 inches. Which is odd, because, you know, it's also his IQ. Hey, you know, maybe I'm just being harsh. Maybe it's just those high sidebirds draining his intelligence. Now, on a side note, Zerubba dressed up as a policewoman the other day to spice up their bedroom life. She told him he was under arrest on suspicion of being a love god. Five minutes later, is released due to lack of evidence. These are my... Favorite. Which is a total lie because <laughs> I haven't tried them. <laughs> I do love how they're so unaware of what the other one's saying. He had no clue what she said. All he heard was a rouser and he slipped into some sort of penile-induced coma. I also love the low-key sniper Karen. Can you get that high? Why I can't get that high? Troy, you're an adult. <laughs> so they go off and, you know, start crying and a bunch of stuff that I can't show happens. Then has a question about multiplication. Would you want to have another kid? And can you believe it? For the second time this season, Rob has a perspective that is actually clear, responsible, and, you know, pretty realistic. So hold on to your trousers, because here it comes. That's another human being. That's another life. You know, we already got two. Steady on there, Troy. All this thinking is looking dangerously like a habit. He might have all the mental acuity of a wet lettuce, but he's got the right idea about what's best for a family and the people in it. And then there's... I'm currently not on any type of birth control. Good job. Speaking of jobs, we're back over to Coraline and One and Done Daniel. And One and Dan has just got back from work. Just in time for Coraline to demonstrate how she avoids awkward questions by reminding you that you're shit. What did you do today? Um, you're just gonna sit on the couch all nasty? You were sitting there all nasty before he turned up, just saying. But that is kind of true, you know. No one wants a little funky onion patch on the sofa. But this woman is pure heartless entitlement. She'd rather he spend $150 on Uber, when he's probably only bringing in like five, 600 after tax, than get off her lazy bum and drop him there and back. I'll take you like once or twice, you know, I don't really feel like taking you and picking you up all the time. Sure, it's probably very wearing having to drop someone off somewhere every day. But, uh, you know, what happens when you have kids? They tend to need to be somewhere every day. What you gonna do, just stick him in an Uber and hope for the best? But she doesn't give a flying fluffy duck about what that means to him. It's 20 an hour, which is above minimum wage. Okay. I mean, it's all right. The, the, it's all right. And what the hell did you bring to the table, miss? It's not like you were setting up the world on fire before you guilted your mate into driving you home, even though she was so drunk she passed out at 80 miles an hour. <laughs> well, you know, that's my version of events anyway. She's got no interests, no discernible skills. She's probably a right pain in the ass in the work environment, as he's all needy and such a liar and all backstabby and has a lack of empathy for her team. <laughs> Don't worry about what I spent, you know? <sighs> And while we're on it, let's have a little hang on a second, kind of, about her wealth. So I was doing a bit of snooping about, trying to get a figure on what her undisclosed settlement would be. Now, I know nothing about insurance and the following may not be completely accurate. However, I did take advice from professionals. And here's what I came up with. The average settlement for a car accident with injuries is somewhere in the region of $210,000. But it depends largely on the firm you use and whether it exceeds the maximum claim amount of the offending party's insurance company. If it does and goes to court, then 97% of them will be settled before they reach trial. And there's where the money is. If a large vehicle, such as a truck, is involved, it can be around $800,000. A minivan, $600,000, and so on. Let's be generous and give it the full 800k, just for a high-end example. Then the psychological distress can get you about 120k. So let's give it the full whack of 920,000. Not too bad. In fact, 
the highest amount paid out in a settlement was 4.6 billion to a family whose GMC burst into flames. That included 140 million just for the medical bills. Now, because Coraline settled, there can be no more legal recourse. So this is a full and final payment. And what does he spend? Well, the average American household spends 77,000 a year on all their expenses. So her 920K is good for around 11.9 years, provided there's no drastic economic shifts, which means she'll be broke by the time she's 35. Fun thought. Next is time for a commercial break. But stay tuned for much more. So skip the skip to support the channel and I'll see you in a mo. Back now to the Millsy sisters and Millsy picked my interest with this comment. He was cooking something. I don't know. The kitchen made a loud boom and. Interesting. Uh, you know, on an unrelated note. Have you seen that Rhode Island has had a series of explosions and fires recently? On another completely unrelated note, have you heard about the rise in house explosions and fires due to people making a special kind of extract, which requires the use of butane? But we know they wouldn't do that sort of stuff, mixing up stuff and selling it to undercover police, uh, I mean, oops, unsuspecting members of the public. It's not at all like that thing he did with the stuff beginning with F and ending in many people's lives being ruined. You know, that thing where they get the raw ingredient from that other country. Let's call it Bina. Then they do a little home cookery. Yeah, but see, yeah, they wouldn't do that. No, no. So anyway, his poor mother, who has just had a house blown to shit. So my mother's on a train, coming to move in with us right now in an already filled house. Well, the Swiss family mills is just stuffing their faces with pizza. Like, ugh. More of them soon. But for now, we've got one last item of business to attend to, and it's with Legs of Kimbo and Genius Joey. And it's just occurred to them that if Joey is the father of Kim's baby, then that other guy, the one who still pays 2,500 a month. Whatever he's paid up until then, you would owe him back. Now I'm guess gonna be wanting those dollars back if he finds out she's been sleeping without Hips McGee over here while she was supposed to be married. And still, this totally isn't a red flag to old Mensa Man over here. Can My you, money is gonna have to go to bills and health payment now. Like, I'm we gonna can't need be this asking to take care of the for, kid. You know. No, no, your money is gonna have to pay for your kids. I mean, what a cheek. It's not like they get two and a half grand a month for doing nothing while living in their parents' basement for free. But <laughs> gladly, the lawyer lady spells it out for them. And the thing to remember, though, is that is your children's money. Yeah. Yeah, he says. So those atrocious rims you bought for your milfmobile for the kids, were they? Yeah, <laughs> sure they were. So will Joey be the daddy? Will Zerubba and Coraline get their babies? Will Millsy make another mediocre record? Well, you can find out in next week's episode. But before that, here's a couple of words from Lord Ice of the Teington. My mama used to say, if everybody you knew were in a room and we all threw our problems in the air, I bet you reach for yours on the way down. Thank you so much for joining us today. And if you like what I do, then you can join me weekdays for Coffee at the Manor, the bestest way to start us to your day. And please do like and share the video or check out one of these little beauties. So until we meet again, stay beautiful, love to my three, and you take care of yourself. Keep subscribed now for our play. Thank you.